Welcome to a video made about my attempt to make an automatic plant watering system uh, using uh, an Arduino microcontroller. So I have these plants and I want to grow them, but I want to make sure they get water all the time. So I want to use an Arduino Nano uh, microcontroller. Uh, wired up using Funduino soil moisture sensors to determine when the plants uh, will need water. And I forgot to add some labels for the plants and the Arduino. So the idea is that we'll have some uh, sort of watering system. I don't know exactly how uh, that's going to work yet, but we're going to put some valves represented by the yellow valve symbols there, uh, which are going to look something like this guy. Um, they're available on eBay for about $3.50 a piece. We're going to wire the valves to the outputs from the Arduino, and if everything goes well, when the soil moisture content goes low, we will get some water to keep the plants happy, and they will grow. Being that these are dollar and 30 cent sensors uh, direct from China, I wanted to uh, do some tests to characterize their performance using an Arduino, the moisture sensors, and a Raspberry Pi uh, to data log through. So the first thing we need to do is wire up the sensor to the Arduino, which is very simple. Three wires, power, ground, and our signal to analog zero. We then connect the Raspberry Pi to the Arduino with a USB cable uh, so that it can receive the data sent by the Arduino. So the setup's going to look something like this. We got our moisture sensor in some soil. We have it wired into our Arduino Nano and then hooked up to the Raspberry Pi for data logging purposes. We're going to need a sketch on the Arduino to do the work that we need done, and it's going to be very simple. Just a couple lines here. We're going to serial begin in our void setup, which is pretty standard. We're going to create an integer called moisture, which is going to be the value from analog zero. We're then going to print a comma so that uh, when the data is uh, data logged on the Raspberry Pi, we can, it's automatically going to be in CSV format. We're going to print the moisture value, and then we're going to wait a minute, and then we're going to do it all over again. For those who don't know, the Raspberry Pi is a very small Linux computer that runs on about 2 watts of power, which I find ideal for this data logging application. Uh, so there was a couple pieces of software I needed to use in order to uh, get the data logged into the Raspberry Pi from the Arduino. They're called Grab Serial, which got the data off the serial port, and then TS, which added a timestamp into the file uh, for each value recorded. Uh, some notes are that a Grab Serial had to be configured uh, to the correct serial port for whatever uh, computer you're using it on. And then using this command, Python grab serial, pipe to TS, and then uh, sent to data.csv, uh, we are able to generate a log file in CSV format that starts with a date, a comma, and then gives you the soil moisture value. So upcoming here are the results from the first test, which I ran for 24 hours, and I place the soil sensor in well-saturated coconut core and we see that the moisture reading actually goes up for a little bit kind of stabilizes then drops and stabilizes again and that's where I said well I guess there's no more uh, interesting data since it seems to have plateaued but uh, I was wrong I decided to do a second test but I thought that it was going a little slow so I wanted to speed things up. So here we have the soil moisture sensor on a heated mat under a grow lamp in order to accelerate the moisture loss from the soil. Um, I had a little helper here with an OLED display uh, so that I could check on it uh, when I'm 
near the setup. And there's the Raspberry Pi doing its job. And I ran this test for quite some time to make sure that this sensor can read uh, all the way down to zero. So this is a test that ran from the 17th of November to the 4th of December. You can see that for the first couple of days there's actually very little change in uh, the soil moisture reading and then you can see a fairly linear decline for about two weeks showing that this sensor is indeed very capable of detecting small amounts of moisture in the soil. So that's about all I'm going to put in this video because we're already approaching, actually passing the five minute mark and that's about as long as I'd like this to be. Uh, the next steps are going to be to uh, get the water valves, which I've ordered, and maybe do some more testing to determine a good switching point for when to water. I have to make a decision on how the watering is going to take place, but uh, I'll make another video with some updates on how that all goes. Thanks for watching.